Today, we're going to look at an introduction to conic sections. You'll want to use the front page of your conics packet, page one, for these. So, conic sections are curves that can be constructed from the intersection of a plane with a cone, and actually it's a double cone. You can see a schematic of the intersection of the plane with the cone. We've got four different conic sections that we're dealing with parabolas, circles, ellipses, and hyperbolas. And to create each type of conic section, it really depends on the steepness that that plane is passing through a single cone or the double cones. So let's take a little bit of a look at the equation that we use to generate these conic sections. It's the equation that's in that box in the middle of your packet. And this big, long equation is called general form. Now, for us in Algebra 2, the coefficient in front of the xy term, the b, will be equal to 0. And what we want to do is be able to figure out which of those four conic sections we're dealing with just by looking at the equation when it's in general form. Notice that the x squared and the y squared terms have to be on the same side of the equation for us to be able to classify. So, for us to classify as a circle, and when we graph circles, the picture will look similar to this picture, all we have to do is look at the coefficient in front of the, a, the x squared and the y squared terms, and we'll know it's a circle when the a value is equal to the c value. Coefficient a is equal to c for a circle. For an ellipse, the equation will graph a picture that looks like uh, an oval. And to know that we're dealing with an ellipse, we're looking at the x squared and y squared terms. We'll know it's an ellipse when a and c are the same sign, but have different values. So the a number and the c number will be different numbers, but the same sign. For a hyperbola, the graph will look similar to this. And we'll know from the equation that we have a hyperbola when a and c are different signs. The number in front of the x squared and the number in front of the y squared will have opposite signs. One will be positive, one will be negative. For a parabola, and you guys know what the graph of that looks like, we did those in chapter 5 that we just finished. To know that we're dealing with a parabola, either the a coefficient will equal 0 or the c coefficient will equal 0. In other words, there will be only one squared variable in the equation. So let's flip your packet over to page two. That's the back of this front page. And we're going to work on classifying some conic sections. To classify the conic section, we really have to be aware of two things. The two squared terms have to be on the same side of the equal sign and we're only looking at the coefficients in front of the x squared and the y squared. So remember, when I move to a new equation, uh, the writing will go away, so make sure you pause the video as you need to to get the notes written down. So for the first one, we're ignoring the rest of the equation here. We're looking at the coefficients in front of the x squared and y squared terms. We see that the a value is 6, the c value is 6. Since they are the same coefficient, we know that this is an equation of a circle. For number 2, we can wipe out everything and ignore everything else except for that squared term. Notice that there's only one squared term. It's the x squared term. The a coefficient is 1, and since there's only one squared term, we know that this is an equation of a parabola. For number 3, we ignore everything except the two squared terms. We look at these two coefficients. a is 4, c is 2. Since they have the same sign but are different values, we know this e equation is an ellipse.
And for the last one, number four, ignore everything except the two squared terms. Be really careful. A is the coefficient in front of the x squared. The A value is negative 1. C is 4. We notice that the two values are opposite signs. Therefore, this equation represents a hyperbola. All right, so you guys are going to finish the rest of the problems in that table. You're classifying them and uh, stating what the A and C are so you give the reason you know which um, conic section you're dealing with.